Hi all, in this video, let's learn about React use reducer hook. So let's learn these points one after the other. Let's start. So the first thing here we need to understand is use reducer is preferably an alternate for use state. We are not trying to learn about the differences between use state and use reducer. Here we are trying to learn about what are the use cases to use the use reducer. The first thing is when to use use reducer. When the state is complex logic, if you have a complex state logic, then we can use use reducer. If your state, if your next state is dependent upon the previous state, in that scenarios as well, you can use use reducer. Also, whenever, uh, if you want to improve the performance, for example, a, a component deep updates. So in these scenarios, in, in sense, if there are many components in a deep updates, we can improve the performance. How, how means we can send the dispatch method instead of the callback functions. In If you do like this, the performance will improve. The components performance will improve and that we can do with the use reducer. You can pass a dispatch method instead of callback function so that the components performance will be improved. So here, use state, we need to understand an important point is use state is built on top of use reducer. In sense, use state internally uses use reducer. In sense of what all we can do with use state, all those things can be done with the use reducer. That's the first thing. But whereas use state is a simple basic hook where you can manage the simple state transformations that we can use with the use state. And now uh, let's understand the flow of this use reducer. So the flow is when the an event is occurred, the dispatch action is made. Okay, If uh, the user does any button click, then he is going to dispatch a function where he will keep the action and the payload. The second step is where he will keep the action and the payload. Once the action and the payload was kept and he dispatches the action, that will invoke a reducer function. This reducer function is a pure function, which will take two parameters. One is the present um, previous, state, pre previous state and the action. Based upon this, it will return the new state. It will update the new state. So in that case, the re-render happens. As the state is updated, the re-render of the component happens. So this is the basic flow of the use reducer hook. So let's understand this with an example. So to work with use reducer, we need to first import use reducer. I'm doing this use reducer. So we need to import this from React. This is the first point. And the second thing is we need to use this use reducer so this use reducer will take two parameters. Number one is renderer function, sorry, reducer function. So anything, the name can be anything. You can, uh, name can be anything. This is the reference of the function. Reducer function is the first parameter. And the second parameter is initial state. So the second parameter is initial state and it, ha it has a third parameter as well that is optional. And I will discuss about that as well when we are trying to understand about the lazy initialization. So these are the two parameters it uses, use reducer, and it returns an array. So that's the reason we are trying to destructure, destructure array by using this array restructuring. It returns an array. So it, it gives two values. One is a state which holds the current state value. And the second one is the dispatch method, which we use to update the state. So this is same as use state. So now let's define the initial state and the renderer function as well. So the first thing is we are going to initialize the initial state. This is the initial state. Uh, uh, we'll give an object. And in that object, let, just let's take a count, count as a variable. So here count is zero. So just we'll be taking an uh, increment and decrement uh, example here to understand use reducer well. So the second thing we need to do is we need to declare a uh, define a function, rend reducer function. So we are going to use reducer function. So this function, we have discussed this function is a pure function, which takes the previous state and action as the two parameters and it will return the new state. It will, it will not modify the earlier state uh, as this is a pure function. So we'll take, uh, so this is what uh, till now, we have a, a reducer function and initial state. It will return the state and dispatch function. So let write, uh, let's write some code in the render function. So we'll take two buttons and we'll render something like, a, so let's do this. So uh, just I'm, uh, 
showing this count. Let's show just the count value state dot count. Here in the state, now we have an object. The state is holding an count object like this. So state dot count is zero now. So we're trying to show that value first. So next thing is we are taking two buttons. So number one is add button. So number two would be subtract button. So I'm writing a click event as well. So while you click an add function, so in sense, you need to dispatch an action. So dispatch is a method which will invoke this reducer function. When you write dispatch like this, it, it will invoke this reducer function. In sense, whatever the variables, here the variables, you can give whatever you want. But this is a state variable and this is a dispatch method. So you can give anything you want, the names. So whenever you use this dispatch method, you're going to send the action. So what type of action you are sending? So this is an object. So you will be sending the type and you will give this as add. So this is the action you are sending. So when anyone clicks this add button on click, we are writing, we are dispatching and dispatching an action with the type add. So now it, it what it, does it mean? We are calling this reducer function and passing add as a action. So in this action, you will be having this object type as add. So the same thing we'll do for the subtract. So let's uh, change the subtract type as a sub and the text on the sub practice sub. So this is what we are, we are doing, fine. So at this point, we have state, we have declared use reducer, reducer function, initialized state, and we are trying to dispatch the function. Now, whenever we have dispatched, this reducer function needs to handle these actions. So now let's write the some logic here. So here we, I'm taking in a switch statement to find what is the action type so that we are uh, need to do the appropriate action here. So in this action, so this is an object. In this action, we'll be getting like this. So you'll be getting, uh, let me comment out this. So you'll be getting an object like this type add or type subtract. You'll be getting an object like this. Also, you can pass the payload as well. So let me explain that payload uh, while we are discussing the lazy loading. So now this action is an object. It will receive the values like this. So in a switch statement, we are declaring that action dot type. So what is the type exactly? Based upon that type, we are doing the appropriate actions. So now if the action is add, then what we are going to do is we need to, so I'm uh, returning an object here where the count, the initial state. So now we are updating the count value, count dot state dot count. So previous value in this state, will be having the previous value, previous state. So state dot count means whatever the value present in the previous state, it, that will be available here. So we are doing state dot count to get the previous value plus one. So now we are going to return a new state called count with the count, okay? Now uh, we'll write one more case for the subtract. So we are going to write one more case for the subtract and uh, in the same way, we'll be returning an object the count state we are updating the state with the state dot count previous state minus one so this is what we we, we are doing so also uh, let me write a default case so if you not get any of these cases so just uh, return back or uh, throw an error no match so just i'm uh, writing if, uh, if we are not passing an appropriate dispatch function action. So then we'll uh, return an error here. So fine, whenever you click an addition, so this dispatches and we are sending an object of action type, we'll go to this reducer function. And this action will be having an object action dot type. Now, if it is an add, then we are taking the previous state and adding one and updating the this count variable. Okay, it means we are updating the state count. So as the count is updated, this component is again re-rendered. So in that way, this component will work. So let's see that with out, uh, an output. So here, let me show you this. So if I add, the count is incrementing. So every time if I click and add, what is happening internally is this dispatch function is triggering and it is updating this logic. So in the same way, if I click subtract, the count value would be reduced. So this is what how the use reducer hook works in, in with a simple example. So now let's see this. 
with the third parameter so what if uh, lazy initialization i am talking about lazy initialization of the initial state so how to implement or how to achieve that so to do that you need to do one thing like you need to keep an third parameter like this in it so this is optional so why we are going to use this lazy initialization so there are a couple of reasons so the first thing is we are extracting the initial state uh, from the reducer function so we are uh, uh, removing the initial state functionality to from a reducer function to the outside so the, that's the first thing and the second thing is at any point we can reset our uh, we can reset the state to the initial state so that also we can achieve with this lazy initialization also all the time we can't do this initialization so sometimes the state may come from the props as well the initial state may come from the props so that's the reason we'll learn about this uh, lazy initialization there are there are a couple of things as we discuss the benefits so let me write one by one so i'm commenting the initial state and i'm using the function in it so here i'm using a function so that this third parameter is going to call this so as this is a function this is the reference i'm using in it is a function so now now uh, i'm taking initial count so initial count is a parameter and it will return the initial count count is a state variable we are keeping initial count init count or uh, initial count so we will uh, keep this as initial count so now we are calling this function as a third parameter here this function would be called and it will return back the count initial value with the initial value so that at any point if you want to reset to the initial initial state so you can use this function in that cases for example uh, let me add let me add one more case to reset to the initial state so i am writing to add to reset to the initial state so i am writing one more fun con condition so here in this case you can return and you can call this init function you can call this init function so that it will reset the state would be reset to the initial initial state so that is what we can do so let's do that so we need to pass the payload here let me explain you that so we'll take one more button that's a reset button so reset is a button we'll be taking and uh, the action would be reset so when you click this this action we are going to dispatch this reset fine so when this reset button clicks we are going at this point but not just the action we will also send the payload here let's send the payload option as well here i am clicking here a comma and you can send the payload option as well payload means uh, it's like uh, what you are doing this action and take this input to perform your actions so that is what the payload so now in this payload i will send the initial count so so with the help of this payload only we could able to reset the state to the initial state so now let's see this uh, point by point when you click reset we are sending the type action as reset and we are sending the payload as initial count we are sending the payload to the initial count that is the initial count what we are set to the state variable count so now it goes to here and whenever you are trying to reset you are trying to call this init function right so what you need to send is action in this action dot payload you have the initial state so that's the reason when you click reset the initial state becomes whatever the initial state we set so that's the reason it becomes the initial state so now when you click uh, reset we are going to call this function and we are passing the action dot payload it means we are passing literally we are passing the initial count so that's the reason we can reset the count variable to the whatever the variable we passed initially so it means we can handle the resetting to the initial state is become very easy now so now we uh, did this change so to do this change we need to do one more thing so here the initial state is not there anymore because we have commented it so we need to use here initial count so also we have discussed that this initial count can be coming from the props as well so that's the reason let's send this from the prop so here i am sending this app and initial count as 10 okay the this uh, in this way also you can initialize your state so the component property is sending the initial state so this can also be achieved with the lazy uh, initialization so now this initial count is coming so now this variable 
needs to handle this initial count. Yeah. As a app is getting an initial count prop, I'm writing this object and I have destructured it as an object. Props dot initial count we can keep, but directly I'm keeping this initial count. So this is how the lazy uh, lazy initialization of initial is done. So let's see this with an example. Like uh, we have initial count as 10. So that's the reason we got the count as 10. Now I'm incrementing that to some values. And later on, I will decrement. So whatever you do, but if you click the reset, you need to go back to the initial state. So that's the reason it goes to the 10. So this is the main thing you can do. So whenever you reset, you're, you can call this lazy initialization function and you can retrieve back the initial count with the action dot payload. So this is how the lazy initialization works. So fine. Now, now we'll discuss about the comparison with, between the comparison with the Redux. Redux is a design pattern which we use for the application state changes, application state management. Okay, but whereas use reducer is a hook where it maintains the component state, not the application state. That is the only difference we have with by using use reducer and Redux. So the people who is coming from the Redux background, they can easily understand this use reducer. All these uh, actions, dispatch, reducer function, everything will be available in the Redux design pattern. So it's like we are not uh, use reducer e hook is not killing the Redux. Redux is used to maintain the global state management, whereas your use reducer hook is used only to maintain the component level state. So that's the main difference. Hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for the more videos.